Praise the Lord. This is Evangelist Julius Adewumi of the Gospel Distribution Ministry. I'm praying today that the Lord will give us some good exhortation. I want to talk today concerning the restoration the Lord God planned for mankind. I'm going to start from the book of Genesis chapter 5. You will see that the generation, the generation of Adam, they had a longevity. Starting from, Ad, from the book of Genesis chapter 5, you see, the Bible said, Pastor said, Adam lived 130 years and begat his son in his own likeness and after his image and called his name Seth. And this of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years and he begat sons and daughters. And all the days of all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. 930 years close to a, a, a millennium. The Bible said, a day with the Lord is like a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So, from that understanding, we see that when God told Adam that in the day that thou eatest of the forbidden fruit, in that day thou shalt surely die. A day with the Lord is a thousand years. That was why Adam did not live to see the 1,000 year mark. Now, you can see the rest of all the seed of Adam from that first generation. The longest, the one that lived the longest among them is when we come to Methuselah in Genesis chapter 5, verse 25. I will skip Enoch for a moment because this is a specific case where the Lord said he will not see death. Methuselah lived 187 years and begat Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech 782 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were 969 years and he died. 969 years was the longest in that generation except the man that was not to see it which is Enoch in verse 21 of Genesis chapter 5 we see the story of Enoch and Enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah verse 22 says and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters and all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And verse 24, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. So Enoch was the exception in that generation that God took him that he should not see that. And you can see the reference of that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, where Apostle Paul, or the writer of Hebrews, referred to Enoch, the fate of Enoch, that walk with God and please God. In verse 5, he said, Hebrew chapter 11, verse 5, By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we see that the first generation of mankind from Adam after the fall they, they, they lived for close to 1,000 years. But God allowed them to, to be taken away because he has given that ultimatum to Adam in Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. He said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day, in the day, that is the key, that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. So that day, that eat it of the fruit, of the forbidden fruit, he did not live for 1,000 years. He was cut down at 930 years. 930 years. Now, I brought this to 
our understanding to make us to see that number one from genesis chapter 2 god did not plan for human beings to die you can see that because he said the day that they eat of the fruit the knowledge of good and evil in that day they shall die and that was why adam did not clock 1,000 years because 1,000 years is like one day in the eyes of the Lord. So we can say God did not plan for human beings to die to put away this tabernacle of flesh. So when Adam and the generation of Adam were dying, they were dying close to 1,000 years, 930 years, and the next one now and something years, and the next one and on and on. Methuselah lived the longest, 900 and he said all the days of Methuselah were 969 years 969 years and he still died you may say well is that the same calendar yes 969 years the same day writer went further and reduced the ages as they move further and further forward however god was revealing because god will never leave himself without a witness he was revealing to that generation after adam that by just by revelation of the preaching of the word or the inspired inspiration of the Holy Ghost, that they can repossess what Adam lost. They can repossess what Adam lost if they will walk with God. And you will see a Bible verse that alluded to that in Genesis chapter 4, from verse 26 of Genesis chapter 4. The Bible said, When Adam had a son said and to say to him also there was born a son and he called his name Enos the Bible said then began men to call upon the name of the Lord and just like Bible said if you seek me you shall find me when you shall seek me with all of your heart so men began to call upon the name of the Lord from the, the from the lineage of Seth and so we can easily understand that God was revealing to them what caused the death what caused it fall and if they will come back to God they might be able to recover repossess what Adam lost and when men began to call upon the name of the Lord we come to the to the age where Enoch was able to please God because faith comes by hearing and people are growing in faith and some grow to this measure some grow to that measure but Enoch pleased God and he was not for God took him and Methuselah, the son of Enoch, lived the longest, which means he got some revelation from inside from his father how to walk with God, but he did not meet the mark of going to go away without seeing death. However, he lived the longest, 969 years. Now, I brought this, like I said, I brought this in, uh, inspiration, the religion to, to you in this radio land and um, from this preaching to point to the fact that God did not intend for man to die. The fall brought the death, and for human beings to be able to die, there has to be the destruction of the physical body, disintegration of the physical body, and that was where diseases and sicknesses crept in, old age crept in, to wear the physical body down until they can die. So you can see that the first man, Adam, it took 930 years for that physical body to disintegrate, to, to die. Now. When you then go to Genesis chapter 6, let's see what we can see in the book of Genesis chapter 6. Now we have come to the descendant of Noah, to the generation of Noah. After Methuselah came the son of Methuselah, Lamech, and the son of Lamech, Noah. So Noah was the grandson of Methuselah, being a great grandson of Enoch that never died. And we descendants of Noah so we can now claim if you will believe it with me we can claim the inheritance that we have in the Enoch that never died what do you mean by inheritance somebody said you can inherit longevity even the doctors will tell you if you are if you if they see some trouble in your body they said well do your grandparents have this disease do your parents have this disease and you may say it is hereditary now, that is how far, if they want to go hereditary, maybe they think that disease is hereditary. They can also think longevity is also hereditary. 
So if longevity is like we are thinking of your grandparents. Now, if I can go as far back as Enoch, I would say immortality, which Enoch has, is also hereditary. That's how I have been preaching this. Immortality, which Enoch has, is also hereditary. And so I am claiming that hereditary of Enoch to never see death. And the Lord that is going to make it happen, because it is the Lord that gave it to Enoch, he has said it again, just like he revealed it to the generation of Enoch, he has said it again to our generation in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. When he said, Verily I say, verily, verily I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. I always come back to that Bible verse because that is the key Bible verse that the Lord Jesus Christ is like pumping his fist, pumping his fist that he is the one that kept, that we keep, and that kept human beings, and that we keep human beings. He was the one that kept Enoch alive. He is the one that is still going to keep anyone that is going to resurrect, he's going to bring them alive. That's why he say he is the resurrection and he is the life. The Lord Jesus Christ, you see, in him dwelling the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Lord Jesus Christ is the solution, he is the answer to humanity, the answer to the problem of mankind. Jesus Christ is the answer. That's why we call him Savior. And when he was here with us, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, now you use the word a man, so it's individual. If a man keep my saying, he shall never see that this is not a freely given right this is an individual claiming it like the bible said you are listed the, the generation of adam and it's individual person adam lived this long and he died and the next one lived this long and then died. the next one lived this long and he died the next one lived this long and he died and then he come to enoch he said if a man is individual God revealed to them they can repossess what Adam lost. And here comes one man, Enoch, and he walked with God and he pleased God that God said, This will not see death. If a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Now we are to aspire to keep his saying, pursue after Christ, and we shall never see death. It is hereditary. It is not just freely given, it is individually you can repossess it. Repossess it from God. That's really what it is. God gave it to Adam freely. Adam lost it. God is trying to say every any individual can come back and repossess it individually. Something that the old marriage would have inherited just by being human beings through Adam. Adam lost it. The first man lost it. So now it is now individual come back to God and collect it. And Christ came to bring it closer to us to redeem mankind. And now this is where I really am going in this sermon because you will see that God promised that he promised restoration, isn't it? Now when he say we restore, we're going to see how this thing degenerates so that you can see how restoration also will come to take place. It degenerates from Adam that was expected to have immortality and he lost it and then he ended up dying in the day that he ate this forbidden fruit that day he died not so then the generation from that time have been dying at 100 and 800 years 900 years now adam 930 years methuselah 969 years and down and down it came slower and lower and when you come to genesis chapter 6 the bible said terrible more terrible things were happening upon the earth i will read verse 3 I'm going to skip the section where it talks about the sons of God and the daughters of men because the immorality, the, the trouble, troubles increased because of this knowledge of good and evil. Sin was introduced into the human, human race. Sin was introduced from Cain. And the knowledge of good and evil brought more iniquity, more sin. The Bible said the sons of God, the daughters of men, they intermarried. And there have been many people that believe that those are the angels that were expected to be washing over the earth, they became fallen angels that indeed this and interacted with women on, on earth. Some other believe that it was the line of Cain that God sent him away because Cain seems to be he's not, he's, he's not the seed of Adam and he was the seed of the serpent. So that line of Cain separated from from line of Seth and after many centuries they intermarried again. That is what 
many people believe really was being describing whether they were fallen angels or the land of king both are possible because fallen angels have been noted that even they are still manifesting in this generation doing some evil things so that is why this we come to genesis chapter 6 verse 3 and the lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years now i brought this bible verse into this sermon to make you to see that this is the first time that it was declared how long human beings will live he said his days shall be an hundred and twenty years so from Adam living for 900 and some of them living for 800 years and Methuselah, Methuselah lived for 969 years, on and on, back and forth, back and forth, one disappeared, not seen dead. Then God said, iniquity was increasing, sons of God and daughters of men have intermarried, giants were upon the earth, and God said, I will just cut their life short to 120 years. So that was first mentioned in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. So you can see how the how the humanity begin to degenerate from immortality that they used to they should have they should have had through adam coming to one one day they never lived for one day 900 and something years which is close to 1000 but they didn't clock 1000 years that's one day in the mind of god and so then come to this genesis chapter 6 where they are now just living god said now it's going to be 120 years because of the, my spirit shall not always strive with man he also is flesh that is both those that are the line of Seth and those that are the line of Cain, they are also human, they are flesh now. They are both human beings. They are also, also all flesh. And so let's just call their life to 120 years. Maybe the line of Seth was expected to be the righteous line. The line of Cain was expected to be the ungodly line. They could have been cutting their life short by the murder and all this wicked thing going on in the line of Cain. And the line of cell was living to 800 years, but they are also mixing up because they just got their whole life also to 120 years. And the angels that fall, fallen angels that became human beings and put on human flesh, they were also arrested and locked up, according to the book of uh, the books of uh, uh, Apocrypha. Book of Enoch mentions some of those things. Now let's go further. You can see where in the book Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, God called the life span of mankind to 120 years now i'm bringing this to make you to see that when the lord promised that he will restore you will see how the restoration will also will take place but right now we are seeing how the generation the generation of mankind took place from adam through 1000 years they never live 1000 years now it's come down to 120 years and then because of sin and wickedness and also because of all the pollutions in the world let's go to the book of psalms you see in the generation of david it was so pathetic in their generation that they were not even able to even meet 120 year mark you can see in the days of moses moses lived for 120 years just as god promised in the book of genesis chapter 6 that it will be 120 years for for man that was why moses lived for 120 years and even then his strength did not abate so he didn't die because of old age god simply decided to take him up to let him die because of the sin that was recorded for moses now when we come to the book of genesis or uh, book of psalms here is what king david wrote in the book of psalms or it may not actually be most david that wrote it but it was said in the in this book psalm, psalm 90 in the book of Psalms, Psalm, Psalm 90, from verse 8, and verse 9 is where I'm going. He said, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. Say, We spend our years as a tale that is told. And verse 10 said, The days of our years are three score years and ten. That's 70 years. Because when you look at the age of King David, he only lived for about what? 70 or 80 years. And so David was the one that was lamenting in this Psalm 90. And he said, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. That's 70 years. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. So in the days of King David, he was lamenting that 
the strongest among them was living only to 80 years. So you can see that from 120 years that God promised in the book of Genesis chapter 6, it has reduced to 80 years by the time of the days of King David. We can say in our own generation, maybe we have been able to get some medical help and many discoveries. Like Bible said, knowledge shall increase. That is making people to live up to 100 and something years, 90 something years, 120 years, even now. But it's still 115, 120 years. Bringing them back as far back to the days of Moses. For those that are going to live, that are living that long, even in this our generation of the 2000, 2015, 2017 from the 1990s. But the blob, what I'm bringing, bringing us to is to see that God promised restoration through the Messiah. And when we believe in the restoration that God promised through the Messiah, we have to believe that he's going to restore us gradually back to the days of Adam. And not only that, back to that immortality, which is what I'm preaching. We have told me to preach that he's restoring us back to immortality. Let's go to the, to the prophecy of Joel, chapter 2. Because God started promising, prophesying of what he will do through his prophets, even in the Old Testament prophets. And the book of Joel chapter 2, God promised the restoration, which is actually not just restoration of uh, the nation of Israel. It's talking about the human race. Joel chapter 2 verse 25 said, And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. The cankerworm and the caterpillar and the palm are my great army which I sent among you. So that restoration is not just restoring their food and their drinks, which we can say anybody can claim that, but God's promise is can be claimed anytime, anywhere. We can claim the promise for our, for our health that he will restore us. You can claim the promise of God for your livelihood, for your for everything you want to, you can you can apply to. So God is promising that even though He sent this army, even the destruction of human human beings is like an army, an army of diseases. Because if you look around, say what are causing diseases? They say germs, bacteria, viruses. Are those living things? Are the living things? Yes, if you say they are living things that are trying to live inside the body of human beings that is tearing their body down. Well, who created living things? God created living things. So then you can say, if you say there is army that is sent among them, among the human beings, so you can see, apply this Bible verse to everything that troubles human beings. God said, I will restore and drive that northern army. So I will restore to you the years that the locust, the caterpillar, the canker worm and the Palm of us, it is my great army. So God sent all of those things upon human race in a way. You say, wait, God did God send them, or is the Satan that sent them? God was God was responsible. God took responsibility for this, thing, even though Satan brought it upon human race. But God took responsibility. Why? Because even he said in the days of Job, when it when Job, when Job was afflicted with all the disease, God took responsibility for it, but it was the devil that implemented it. Satan implemented all those wrath. But now God has restored us back to himself. Christ is reconciling men unto God so that we can repossess our, our, our inheritance. And that is where I'm, my, this someone is giving, getting us to. God has said, I will restore. And now when he's going to restore us back to the plan of God in the beginning, which is the plan of God is for Adam to live on this planet and subdue this earth. And the plan does not include death, physical death. So it's going to restore us. God is planning to restore us. So I will restore to you the years that the canker worm has eaten. That is the promise of God for mankind, not, to, not only to the nation of Israel, for mankind. And Christ has come to bring us back. And this is why in the book of John, Christ said, The thief cometh not. Who is the thief? Satan. And everything that we are struggling with is the thief that is robbing human beings of our peace of mind, robbing human beings of our health, and robbing human beings of our of our life. And we put everything and call it Satan or, or devil. But Christ said, But I am come. Verse John chapter 10, Gospel of John chapter 10, verse 10 said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So Christ has come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. 
What is this life? This life that Adam lost in the beginning, which is immortality, God is restoring. But Christ said he has come that we may have that life and have it more abundantly. So now the restoration is what Christ has brought. And that is why the scripture is telling us in many words. In the second Timothy chapter 1 verse 10, the Bible said, Christ has abolished death, which is actually the ultimate punishment for mankind in the day that thou eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. So which means is the ultimate death for mankind is the is the mortality. And second Timothy chapter one verse ten says Christ has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Even this gospel that we preach. He has brought life and immortality to light. Second Timothy chapter one verse ten. And that was also why Christ said it is given to individual now, it has to be individually claimed. Christ said of himself Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. It's restoring us back that when individually can come back to him, we shall co- co- recollect or repossess what Adam lost, which is immortality. Which is immortality. He not was able to get it. He gave it to Elijah the prophet, but Elijah is going to come back. But some people assume that he's going to come back because he didn't die. No, that's not the reason because there's a different reason for that. But I will not go into that in the moment. But that all is a part of prophecies being fulfilled. Because God has to say, oh, we have to fulfill all righteousness. So, but I will leave that for another time. But this is gospel distribution ministry. And I want you to write to us so that we can get some more exhortation. I just pray that the Lord will open your understanding to see that what Adam lost in the Garden of Eden, Christ has come to restore us back to that paradise of God where we can partake of the tree of life. Because you see, when Adam lost it, what did the Bible say about the tree of life? God said he has to drive them out of the garden so that they do not partake of the tree of life and live forever. So this living forever, which is immortality, is what Adam lost. And God is going to bring us back to that immortality, which is what I am is telling me to preach. And we have to believe that we have to overcome this physical death. And it's part of it. Immortality is going to mankind at the end. And this is what the Lord is saying. So that they do not partake of the tree of life and live forever in their condition of sin. God said they don't, know, they don't want, he doesn't want them to be in that condition of sinful nature and living on the physical earth forever. That's why he drove them out of the Garden and that garden may not really be a physical, a physically, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a revelation that we talked about about that later some other time. But God drove them out of the garden so that they will not put forth their hand and eat of the tree of life and live in that condition of sin, knowledge of good and evil, doing evil forever. Verse 22 of Genesis chapter 3. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us. To know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Lest he live forever in this condition. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Now, there are revelations in, involving that, which I'm not going to go into that right now. But we, we are running out of time. In the next broadcast, we continue this discussion about restoration of humanity, of mankind, back to the Garden of Eden, back to the mortality that Adam lost, which is what Christ has brought. Everything is fulfilling Christ the Messiah. And that is why he said, the Lord said to the Messiah, Sit down, my right until I make thy enemies thy footstool. And we are the body of Christ. God is making our enemies, which is all the enemies of mankind, is the sin that brought Adam down, and all the diseases that tear the body of Adam down, and the death that finally destroyed Adam in the first place. But God is restoring us back so that we are going to overcome diseases, overcome sin, which is the first one, overcome diseases. Christ has given us the power over all the sickness and diseases. In my name, they shall cast out devils, they shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. And finally overcome the physical death also. Because the Bible says the last enemy that shall be destroyed 
is death. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 25. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So you can see how God is going, is restoring us back. If you are listening to me in the, on this radio broadcast, you are not even a believer in Christ. You are not partaking of this. You've got to come to Christ and first be saved from your sin through the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only one that can save mankind from their sins by the born again experience. Anyone that is in Christ, you become a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. Christ has to be living inside you. Jesus is the name that you have to call upon to come and live inside you and take sinful nature from you. Then the sin nature is dealt with. Then he gave us power to lay up our hand on the sick and recover. Then you have power over sickness and diseases so that you can overcome those. And then the final thing, like I said, sin, disease and sickness, and then death. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And this is the age that God is telling us to preach that he is giving us the authority over death, even the physical death, so that he can restore mankind back to that immortality that Adam lost. Not only one person now is going to restore the bunch of believers, a band of believers, saints of the Most High God are going to repossess that immortality. And this is the age that is going to bring it to us. Write to us and we shall send some more exhortation. God bless you. Talk to you again next time.